everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be talking about the things I look for when choosing a reference photo for drawing portraits with graphite. All of the images I'm going to show you in this video have been taken from Pixabay. The majority of these are coloured photos that I've converted to black and white just using my iPhone. In most cases I just used the mono filter, decreased the exposure slightly, in some cases I also used a crop and increased the sharpness. I tend to stay away from the black and white filter because I find it's just a little bit too harsh. It gives a little bit too much of a contrast and you end up losing those midtones. So the mono filter is perfect for converting your colour photos into black and white for the purposes of doing your graphite drawing. The first thing I want to talk about is blur. When you're drawing a portrait with graphite, the very first thing you need to do is a line drawing. This is probably the most important stage and the most critical step in the process. Here you need to get the proportions right, you need to capture the characteristics and the uniqueness of the face. That's what really sets you up for getting a good likeness of the model. But in order to capture all the subtleties of the expression, you need to have all the information. And this is where blur can really hamper you before you even get started with your portrait drawing. What you need to remember is that photography is an art form in itself. When you're taking a photographer's image, that is the end result of the photographer's creative efforts. So let me show you this photograph. As you can see, the eye is the focal point and the scarf and the edges of the face fall out of focus. So as an artist trying to recreate this image, particularly if you're trying to achieve a photorealistic effect, you're missing key information because it's blurred. Now it's important to identify this before you start drawing because you need to decide if you're happy that you have enough information that you'll go ahead and work around the blur. In this case you might go ahead and you can work out the lines on the face but it's important to know that this is a limiting feature of the photo. Aside from the effects that a photographer may have deliberately created there can be also different reasons for a photo being blurred. In this next photo the photo is in focus but the blur comes from the dark makeup around the eyes combined with dark shadows. This makes it very difficult to draw the eyes and I would stay away from using a photo like this. You might think you will just put dark values in and hope for the best but the outcome will look flat because the reality is that there are lots of lines and tones in that area which are not captured in the photo. Sometimes you can start off with a great image but as you adjust it and print it out you find that all of a sudden it's become very blurry and very pixelated. This can happen if you've cropped an image too much or if you've taken screenshots. That can really reduce the sharpness of the photo. Also, if you're printing out an image to use, I recommend you save the image as opposed to screenshot it and also print it on photo paper as opposed to normal printer paper. This will give you a much clearer and sharper image to work with. The next thing I want to talk about is lighting. This is probably the single most important thing to consider when you're choosing a reference photo. You're looking for a photo that has a good contrast between lights and darks. You want to clearly be able to see nice bright highlights and you want to be able to see the dark shadows and all the range of tones in between. So some of the things that you want to watch out for are as follows. Overexposure and underexposure. Overexposure is where the shadows are too dark and present as a flat back image. So this photo that I'm going to show you here is a great image. There's lots of detail in the parts of the face we can see, but it's overexposed around the nose, around the cheek. So you can see those flat black areas against a black background would make this a very difficult image to draw using graphite. You can't see the details in the shadows, and this means you either have to make it up, which makes it very difficult on yourself, or you have to leave it as just a plain dark color. This will make your image look very flat. Overexposure, on the other hand, is the opposite of this. It means that you lose all the mid-tones in the photo and you end up with just a flat white image. The next thing you want to look out for is flat lighting. This is commonly used by photographers who are aiming to create an airbrushed, flawless finish. So they use lighting to try and remove any lines or blemishes in the skin and create a really smooth finish. Now this is completely at odds with what we as artists are looking for because it's those lines, those blemishes, those wrinkles and how the light hits them that really gives a face character and makes an image interesting to draw with really interesting shadows. This next image is a great example of good lighting. The lighting is great for graphite drawing. You can see good highlights and shadows and lots of variety in midtones will give you lots of information and lots to work with and you can make this really realistic. 
What's great is also the reflection in the eyes, the darkness in the eyebrows, the makeup isn't too dark around the eyes and around the mouth. You can clearly see all the lines, all the shadows and all the highlights. This is a really great image to use. The next thing I would recommend you look out for is the expression. If you're a beginner and you're learning to draw realistic portraits for the first time, it's a learning curve. You're not going to become an expert at drawing hair, eyes, proportions, ears, mouth, teeth, all in the one go. So what I would suggest is you think about the expression and have a look at what's included in the photo so that you can decide what you want to learn from drawing this photo. If we look at this photo, you'll see the head is tilted slightly. What that means is that the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the chin all need to be considered when you're drawing the proportions. You need to make sure that they're following the same angles and the same lines all the way down. You also note that the top of the head is towards the top right hand corner of the photo and this is where the hair is parting. Other than that, it's quite a nice photo. The tones are quite good, the mouth is closed, there's a serious expression and you can clearly see a lot of lights and darks. This next image is a fantastic image. It's so entertaining and so unusual. The expression is fantastic. The lighting is quite good as well, but I wouldn't really recommend this for a beginner because it will be quite difficult to get all those angles right. And it is a very unusual pose. So sometimes if you try something that's a little bit unusual and looks a little bit unnatural, if you don't capture it just spot on, your drawing can actually look a little bit off. The next thing I want to talk about are props. There's no problem having props as part of your portrait, but you just need to be aware that this is a different discipline and a different skill that you're working on. A valuable one as well, but it's just a different skill. Let's look at the first photo. This is a beautiful image. Backlighting gives you enough information to clearly see the outline of the hat and the hair outlines are also clear. The earrings and that beautiful necklace and sequence on the jacket are great for practicing, but there's not a lot of detail in the face. It's quite stuck in a mid-tone value, so there's not a lot that you're going to be able to work with. If you choose this photo, most of your time will be spent on the hat, the necklace and trying to get in all that fantastic detail. Now there's nothing wrong with this, but you're not going to learn a lot about drawing a face. And the final tip I want to give you is that when you're choosing a reference photo for graphite portrait drawing, you should choose an image that you like. As a beginner, it's easy to get demotivated when you feel like you're not making any progress. But if you have an image that you really like, that you're really interested and motivated to complete, that will really help you to keep going. It doesn't really matter what the image is, who it's of, or anything like that. What matters is that it's just something that motivates you and something that appeals to you. So we've talked about blur, lighting, expression, props and personal preferences and I hope that you've got a good idea of the things to look out for when you're choosing a reference photo that will make your life a little bit easier and allow you to produce better results. It's not about finding that perfect photo, it's about being able to look at a photo and seeing where the challenges lie and be able to identify where the opportunities are for you to learn new skills and the elements of a photo that will contribute to a great graphite drawing. How well will this photo translate into a graphite drawing? How easy will it be to achieve? How much information do I have? And how much will I have to make up? I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos coming soon.